Yeah, there is nothing more useful and classic, in fact, than, than a pie dough. You can use it for so many different types of things. Sometimes I do it with butter and some lard, especially if I do like a quiche where you have bacon in it and so forth, and the lard really gave it a great deal of flakiness. Often, however, I do it just with the butter. And when I measure the flour, I go directly in the bin like this and equalize it with a knife. Now, this is important because three cups of flour done this way is about a pound. If you sift that pound of flour, you'll probably have three cups and a half. That aerate it when you sift it. So here I have a cup and a half of flour, a little dash of salt, a dash of sugar, that's it, and the butter. Now the butter here, I have about four or five ounces of butter. And I could let it turn in the machine long enough so that the moisture in the butter will be practically enough to cohere the dough, get it together. If, however, I process it only a little bit so that I can still see the piece of butter, then I will have to add water. If I do that, I will have some of the flakiness, the flakiness that I get in a puff paste if the butter is still apparent. See, if I do it this way, you could see that if I get that dough here, I'm going to have pieces of butter all over the place. And that the principle of a puff paste where the dough is separated from the butter, it's the time in layer. So this is not exactly the same, but a little bit. So there I will put some water. And again, the amount of water depends on how much you incorporate the flour and the butter together. Here, probably like three tablespoons, three, four. Let's see. Just a couple of pulse things this way. I want to grab it with my hand. I want to be able to hold it together this way. That's enough. So the dough is not completely incorporated, as you can see here, and that's what I want. I will get flakiness out of that dough. It will be tender and flaky. I'll get that dough together, and I can see that it's holding together, and that's what I want. And I will use, of course, a little bit of flour to roll it. Now, a lot of people tell you to let the dough rest. We know when you process it so minimally as I did, you don't really have to let it rest. Okay. This. It doesn't have much elasticity because I have not worked it out with the water. What I'm saying is that you can work flour and butter together and it doesn't get elastic. It's only by the time you put the water in it that it develops the gluten and it becomes elastic. The ultimate dough this way is a bread dough, water and flour. The ultimate dough at the other end of the spectrum is a cookie dough, flour and butter. This one is somewhat in the middle. I can see here. And I can see the streak of butter throughout. But I can see butter throughout here. What you want to do now, you want to roll your dough directly on your rolling pin and unmold it the other way. Meaning that this was the part which was on the table before, that is the part with the flour. There is no flour underneath. Now, edge it inside. You know, you don't. And usually you want to do a bit of a border with the dough. So what you do, you grab a little piece of dough and bring it inside so it gives you a bit of a rim. And then now you can cut the dough with your rolling pin one way, and then the other way. Now you have that rim here that you want to press it so that it look nice and neat and, and the same all around. Okay, you can cook it this way, you can even mark it if you want with a little bit of a, with a fork or a knife. All around if you want to get an edge. Now that dough can be filled up with 
apple or different type of fruit and cook directly. Or sometimes we bake blind the dough, so called that is a piece of paper, you know, a piece of paper, a piece of aluminum foil, sometimes it holds it, some way to cook it without anything inside and then finish it up after. <laughs>